Praise the Lord. This is Sister Marilyn Belcher, and I'm the pastor of the First United Pentecostal Church here in Centerville, Alabama. And uh, it's been a wonderful day in the Lord. It's, it's the day that the Lord hath made. And, and in spite of it all, God is still on the throne. And that's what we've got to remember in these trying times, is that God is still in control. He's still on the throne. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly what the enemy of our soul is doing. He knows everything. And so don't ever feel that uh, God doesn't know. He does know. And he's got a plan. He's got a purpose. And he's got a plan. And we've just got to trust him and put all of our faith, all of our confidence, we got to put everything in Him and lean on Jesus. Today, I, I, I'm wanting to uh, speak to, especially to those that are sick and shut in. I, I want to speak to those that are hurting today. Now, this could really just about include each and every one of us. I, I, I want to speak to those that are discouraged today and, and I just want you to know that Jesus is still alive and well. I woke up this morning and I know that there's a song that, that, that has that in it. As a matter of fact it's the title of it. And I woke up to that this morning and, and I was hearing Jesus is alive and well. Go tell everyone that you know and tell them for me Jesus is alive and well. So to you today that uh, maybe you find yourself in quarantine, uh, maybe you find yourself in uh, uh, self-isolation, you know, and, and the Lord was speaking to me this morning about how all of this self isolation is leading into self deprivation and the word deprivation means to be deprived of and, and so we find ourselves being deprived of interacting with others being deprived of the ability to go here and there and there's a lot of things that uh, goes into self isolation or quarantine that truly is leading into social deprivation including the church we find ourselves uh, away from our brothers and sisters and the devil's very cunning he knows that we need to be together we need the fellowship of each other and so the devil is working I'm not saying social distancing is not important because it is I'm not saying saying that we we should not wear a mask. I'm not saying that. We do need to wear our mask. We need to do whatever we can do to protect ourselves, our families, and others. But we've got to be aware that the devil is also working. And if he can get the churches not to fellowship and, and brothers and sisters not to fellowship he knows he's getting us isolated from each other he's getting us feeling like we're deprived of getting together so today i just want to speak to you my friend and tell you jesus is still alive and well so I'm going to be reading from the book of John in the 20th chapter in verses 18 and 19. And then I'm going to go down just a little bit more in that chapter and read verse 26 to you. So John the 20th chapter reading verses 18 and 19. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day of evening, being the first day, then the first, read verse 19, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, 
where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Then we go over into verse 26. And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. I want you to know Jesus loves you. He loves me. He loves each and every one of us so much <clears throat> that there is nothing that can come between him and us. Not even a closed door. Not even the walls of a building <clears throat> or the walls of a house. Nothing can separate us <clears throat> from the love of God and from Jesus because he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So you can only imagine the disciples who had been with Jesus during his three years of ministry. They had seen the miracles. They had seen the dead brought back to life. They had seen the blind eyes open. They had seen the deaf ears to open and they could hear. They had seen the, the mute that could not speak began to, to talk. They had seen the lame and the crippled began to run and glorify God. And now he had been crucified on the cross. And you can imagine the fear that was in them. And they began to draw aside among themselves. And so here in this first reading, it's ten of the disciples. Judas is dead. And so, and the Bible said in this particular reading, the first one, Thomas went with them. So there was ten disciples. And so the Bible says there in verse 18, Mary Magdalene, she was talking. She was the one who had so many devils cast out of her by Jesus. And she loved him. And the Bible says she's telling the disciples of an experience that she had had in seeing the Lord. He had not ascended into heaven. And so she was saying, I saw him. <clears throat> and she was telling them. The things that he had spoken unto her. <clears throat> and the Bible says the same day at evening. The first day of the week. When the doors were shut. The doors were shut. And the disciples were assembled together for fear of the Jews. Appeared Jesus. Nobody opened the door. Nobody heard a knock at the door. Nobody heard the ding dong at the door. The bell ringing. No windows were open. And there came Jesus. And his first words to them were, Peace be unto you. He's speaking the same words to us today. Our, our cage, so to speak, is rattled. Our nerves are shattered at times. We don't know what's right and what's wrong according to the media and, and according to the things going on around us. We don't know what we supposedly can do and can't do. Uh, we don't know if the stores are going to have food or the shelves going to be open, empty. We just don't know. But one thing I do know is that my God is still God. And he is on the throne. And he's not going to be restricted, restrained in any measure, shape, form, or fashion. And so here they were. And Jesus appeared. And he said, peace be unto you. And then eight days later, he appeared again. He appeared many times during this 40-day period. After that he had risen from the, the grave, but yet not 
ascended. And so during this 40-day period, he, he appeared seven, seven, several times. But eight days after appearing to the ten, now Thomas was with him. Oh, Doubting Thomas. I've even been accused of being a Doubting Thomas in my time. But here Thomas was with him. So all 11 disciples were together. And the Bible says there in that verse 26, Jesus, then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. He had already heard, he knew that old Thomas was doubting unless he saw the nail prints in his hands. And, and, and he saw all the stuff that had gone on there at the crucifixion. He knew about that. But he came because he wanted to encourage Thomas. And so in the very next verse, the Bible said he spoke directly to Thomas. And he said, Rich hither thy finger, behold my hands. Rich hither thy hand, Thrust it into my side and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said, my Lord and my God. Jesus comforted him. Another time when he appeared is with Mary Magdalene. The time that she was telling the disciples, I saw him. It was back there at the tomb. And she was there in the garden. And the Bible says there that she was there and, and she saw two angels sitting in white. The one at the head and the other at the feet in the tomb where the body of Jesus had lain, past tense. And they, said, they the angels, said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? And she began to tell them that uh, she wanted she wanted to know where they had taken away her Lord and laid him. And the Bible says when she had spoken, she turned herself around and there stood Jesus. But she didn't know it was Jesus. She's grieving. She's hurting. And she just wanted to know, where did you lay the body? And so she didn't recognize or know it was Jesus, but Jesus knew it was her. And the Bible said he asked the very same question that the angels had asked her. Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She thought he was the gardener. And she said, if you would just tell me where you placed him, where you laid him, I'll take him away. And Jesus had to speak one word. And he said, Mary. And immediately she knew who it was. She said, Master. Jesus will talk to us. He knows our name. He knows your name. He knows you're hurting. He knows you're confused. He knows you're grieving. He knows your plate is so overloaded and you're overwhelmed. Are you listening? If you'll listen intently, you'll hear him and he'll speak your name. If you'll just submit yourself to him, he's the burden barrier. He, he, he can handle all of this. We can't. But Jesus is still alive and well. And in the, in the next time that I want to bring up where he appeared, but not so much in body form, but in a voice, it's found in Acts, the ninth chapter, and it's in verses four and five. And we got Saul, a Tarsus. He's got a letter in his pocket. And he's on, his, on the road of Damascus. He's going to have the church persecuted. And the Christians killed or thrown into prison. But Jesus has a plan for his life. 
He, he knows he's going to be the greatest apostle, and the, one of the greatest preachers there's ever been. But he got to get his attention and turn him around. And the Bible says there in that reading in Acts, the ninth chapter in verse four, the Bible said that as Saul began to the journey, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined about round about him a light from heaven, bright light. And all the ones that was with him, that they just froze. There wasn't any chatter going on. They froze. And the Bible says he fell to the earth. He heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And Saul answered, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. I'm Jesus. Jesus called him into the ministry. He called him to repentance. My friend, Jesus is alive and well. He's still calling us, whosoever will, to come to him. He wants to comfort you. He wants to heal you. He wants to hold you. He's alive and he's well. So in all this that's going on in our lives, our lives, let's look up. Let's look up to the God of heaven. In the book of Revelations, I read that Jesus, in the very first chapter of Revelations, where John, the apostle John, was on the Isle of Patmos. And the Bible says when Jesus spoke to him. And I'm in verses. In verse uh, 17 and 18. He said when I saw him. I fell at his feet as dead. He laid his right hand upon me saying unto me. Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. My friend, our God is alive and well. Oh, Slewfoot, that devil, as I've heard it preached so many times in years past, that old devil don't even have the keys to his own house. That's how much power he's got. Jesus said, I have the keys to hell and of death. Our God is alive and well. Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Malachi 3 and 6 says, For I am the Lord. I change not. He's alive and well. So today, whether you're in isolation, if you're in quarantine, if you're just distraught, look up. Look up. Our redemption draweth nigh. Heavenly Father, I commit this message unto you. I commit this video unto you. I commit every soul that listens or sees it. I pray, God, that they will look up and that they would find you if they do not know you. And if they do know you, but God, they're just worried down. Help them to look up and God, let it get deep within them that Jesus Christ still walks through the doors. He still walks through the walls. He still is doing miracles because he is alive and well. And we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen.